Hello motherfuckers, welcome back to my motherfucker channel. <laughs> and today we are going to be reacting to what, Lana Del Rey's Honeymoon album. Wow! City. Last week we did Ultra Violence. Um, I am in my Lana Del Rey era if you haven't noticed. And two things, well, three things before I start this video. I'm back in my space. It's a little messy. Don't say anything. It's a little messy, but um, it's more of an aesthetic for me, okay? And I'm just so happy that we're back where I feel like we belong. Gag. Two, I dyed my hair. And three, before I start this video, Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'm trying to build a little community here. Um, and I'm just excited to keep going with this era and see where these albums take me. And I'm really excited about this one because I don't really hear many people talk about this album from Lana. So it's going to be interesting just to... The first listen, okay? It's going to be gagged. Um, so let's go. <laughs> Okay, the first song is called Honeymoon, the title track to this album. Let's go. Ooh. Very cinematic. We both oh my god. Oh. The vocals already. very strong start to this album that literally I've never heard anybody talk about. There's like birds tweeting outside just, oh my god. But they must be gagged because I'm gagged, okay? Because, um, for, I just want to talk about her vocals uh, once again for a second. Um, if you watched my video last week, I was just gagged, throwing up from just the, the just, Bitch, she just be singing, okay? And it always sounds so fucking good. And it's the it's what she be singing about that really gets me. Because here, she just, it just sounds like it's like this perfect man. And they're in their honeymoon stage or whatever. Or just going on a, you know, a honeymoon. What a honeymoon is. And he's just the perfect man man and just those beautiful vocals so solid so broad i like there's so many descriptive words i could use for this bitch's vocals and they always eat okay so for me this is a good start to this album okay i loved the soft build up and there wasn't much of a like boom punchline so it was just a solid just slow intro to an album and i think that's beautiful um so let's keep going the next song is called music to watch boys to the layered vocals oh i'm here for this god. oh my god God, you! I cannot imagine a better song. To me, that song is a 10 out of 10, okay? 
So far, this is my favorite. I know that we're only the second song in, but that's my favorite song in this album so far. Gagging. It's so soft and sensual. Even with that buildup being throughout the song, it wasn't a heavy drop. I'm expecting a heavy drop, but there is no heavy drop. It's like fairy music. Okay, like, I just, I'm, I'm really gagging right now. Because, you know, usually when people make songs about, like, boys or, like, you know, like, guys, like, you know, like, being in love with guys or just watching guys, it's really funky, pop, upbeat, crazy sounds. I like this better, okay? It just gives it a, a different, um, view. I like this. This was, this was really beautiful, um my god the layered vocals just like her talking after she just set up bar or whatever it was just very sensual and it felt personal but it felt fun at the same time playing soft grunge songs just to drown out the noise it's just it's it's kind of random but like a beautiful random and it like just all adds up and makes sense <sighs> i love it I'm gagging, Lana, what the fuck? Okay, so last week I said that Lana, sh when she sings, it just like gives me like Siren or Witch of the Sea or just like, it just reminds me of like the sea for some reason or you know, the ocean, the water, just water in general. Um, But this week it's giving me um like James Bond, like secret love that is dangerous. You know what I'm saying? It's giving me very cinematic movie vibes. Love it. I'm I'm obsessed with it. Let's keep going. The next song is called Terrence Loves You. Gag. Oh, oh my god. Bye. First, I want to mention the melody on that song was just simply, I can't, I can't even explain it. She just is doing it for me. This journey is really fun so far. You know, I didn't really know what to expect, but I did though, because I've heard a couple albums throughout her catalog, but like, bitch, I'm like, in it to win it okay i'm not going nowhere this is i might be a stan after this for real because what in the fuck first of all like i said the melodies within the these songs all these songs so far are just so gagged and that's where i get these like visualizations like when it reminds me of like the sea or a spy franchise you know 007 type vibes it's the melodies that hit so hard. First of all, so it's the melodies, but it's also just what she speaks, like the, the shit that she's saying, because it just takes you to another realm, okay? If you're the kind of listener like me, it just takes you somewhere and it, it gags you. I'm seeing the hype that Lana is. I just want to give an example. She says, I don't matter to anyone, but Hollywood legends will never grow old. And though our love was hidden, it will never grow cold. But I lost myself when I lost you, but I still got jazz when I've got the blues. Then I still get trash, darling, when I hear your tunes. It's just, it sets you up, okay? Like almost reading a book or watching a movie, okay? It's very interesting and it just, it keeps the listener 
intrigued. So this, to me, this is a great album so far, okay? I haven't heard anything I don't like. Um, and dare I say, this might be better than Ultraviolence. Low-key, I think I'm gonna say it might be better than Ultraviolence so far, okay? This, that was only the, what, third song? Girl, she's like, she's doing it. She's doing the thing. You know, I can't even be mad at sister. She's gagging him. But Terrence, you broke my sister's heart. Maybe, I think. I don't know. Um, and uh, we don't like that, okay? Um, God be with you. Gag. Um, but let's keep going. The next song is called God Knows I Tried. Oh my God, the vocals. The hums. Bitch. Gag. First of all, I want to say, I am not a religious person, okay? Like, not super deep religion, religious person, you know? Um, but this just made me closer with God, okay? Not even <laughs> to be funny, okay? Because I know, like, people that are very religious would love this, okay? It just puts you in a good place, you know? Um... If, especially if you are religious like that. Okay, I'm gonna be real. I don't like religious songs. I don't, you know, just keep that for Sunday school, whatever. But when it's done good like this, it it's a pass to me because I could listen to this in my free time with no, you know, whatever. It's it's a gag. But huh, bringing it back to why I'm here, just the good music itself. These visualizing lyrics, okay? Get used to me saying it, okay? Because Lana has them. We're here, okay? This is literally the beginning of the song, and it, once again, just sets up the tone of where you're about to go, what you're about to get. It's just a gag. She says, Sometimes I wake up in the morning to red, blue, and yellow skies. It's so crazy I could drink it like tequila sunrise. Put on that Hotel California and dance around like I'm insane, okay? You know, first of all, first of all, first of all, just the drinking the sky. It's, it's, it's beautiful, you know? Just, like, visualizing it. It's just beautiful. I, I, I really don't know how else to explain that. If you don't get lyrics like that, if you don't see it how I'm seeing it, I'm sorry. But it's just... Mm, she hit the mark with that one. I think it was beautiful. And that's what instantly drew me into the song. And what made me even like the song even better. Even though she is speaking, you know, religiously, whatever. It's a, still a great song because of stuff like this. Then she said, put on that Hotel California. First of all, bitch. Somebody told me um, a while back, if you ever hear Hotel California just randomly playing, something bad's going on. Okay, I and you know I I get it I get it. Hotel California is like a just a a, a f weird funky deep rock spooky kind of song you know so I get it. So just the fact that she mentioned that that's my bitch okay because first of all I love Hotel California okay I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna admit it. So the fact that she just said it in this song about religion and shit it's it's to me it's a gag. It's like best of both worlds. Spooky God. You know? God. <laughs> but the next song is called High by the Beach. I've heard of this song, but I haven't heard this song. So let's go. Where are we going? Wait. The distorted vocals gagging. Oh, 
fucking gag. Okay. Bitch. What? I see why that was a hit, you know, and why people have talked about that. I've heard people talk about that song. But me, personally, I've never listened to it, okay? That that was an experience, okay? First of all, let me say this. I love when... I love psychedelic music, okay? That's some of my favorite... That's one of my favorite genres of music is just psychedelic music. Whether that be rap music that's psychedelic or just this. Just this right here. But I do not like when people make psychedelic music where it's just so oversaturated, where it, it's unlistenable. That was perfect. That was a perfect, perfect psychedelic song. And really put you in the fucking mood, okay? What? Now I want to go to the beach and get fucking high. I don't even smoke anymore, okay? But that just made me want to go to the beach and get fucking high with my lover, okay? And she says, anyone can start again, not through love, but through revenge. Through the fire, we're born again. Peace by vengeance begin brings the end. Oh my god! Powerful. It's powerful. I'm, I'm really, truly gagging, okay? And then at the end, she was talking over that beat. First of all, that beat was beautiful. I love when Lana gets fucking nitty gritty. She pulls out her black card, okay? Love it. I love when she does that, okay? The distorted vocals over that beat was just... Mm, that was chef's kiss, okay? Um, is it is it a cliche if I say that this is one of my favorite songs because this is a hit? I don't know. I, I'm just really gagged, okay? I can see why it was a hit, though. You know? Let's keep going. The next song is called Freak. Bitch. The beats are really coming through. Stop. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. God, I'm gonna keep saying that after every song. Just simply because I'm I'm fucking gagged. You know, I didn't think that um Norman Rockwell would be topped for me, but this might I don't know. Every song so far is a gag, and it's like each song is hitting for different reasons, but bitch. I love when she uses 808s. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. You know, just the heavy beat drops. I know this album will sound really good in headphones. But, you know, oh my fucking god. That's the buildups I'm talking about, okay? When it's a soft, slow buildup and then boom, we drop the hammer on it. I didn't think we were going to get that, but girl, she's giving it to me. Okay, and she's she likes it rough, rough. And I take back what I said. That was my favorite song. Okay, she has a song on Norman Rockwell called "California." Come to California when you're ready. Vibes, you know. It, that that's what this was giving. This was like a lead up, a pre ample to that. Okay, she's been wanting this person to come to California so they can slow dance to rock music and kiss why they do it it's mm, she really makes me fetishize, fetishize 
California and just falling in love on the beach. Okay. Mother. <laughs> She's mother. But let's keep going. The next song is called Art Deco. That psychedelic vibe already. Okay. just where do we go from here you know i'm just i don't know these last few songs this is my favorite lana del rey okay like she's so good at this sound right here okay you know it sounds so modern but so relaxed and so like chill rock vibes it's alternative okay that's what it is it's so fucking good she's really good at what that was okay just, let's just say the art deco vibe okay so fucking good you know it really puts you in a place once again with the visualizing of just listening to music if you don't know what art deco is i'm gonna put a couple examples on screen i feel like i'm dancing around in one of these buildings with my lover we're really high we don't know what's really going on but we're vibing. It's just a really good vibe. Um, she really can make you once again fetishize a great relationship with somebody that you can just fall in love with while listening to this album. You're so art deco. Like, who comes up with this shit? Who lives in her mind? I'm just, ooh, it's genius. It's fucking genius. The middle part of this album, because I'm pretty sure we're like halfway done with this album, it's, it's just, it's really sending me, okay? It's sending me here, it's sending me there. I love it. I'm obsessed with it, okay? I, I really have no more than that to fucking say about it. You know, and the, the fact that I never hear anybody talk about this album in particular is blowing my mind because the album itself is just blowing my fucking mind. But let's keep going. The next song is called Burnt Norton Interlude. Right. Are both perhaps present in time future? What the fuck? The abstraction, remaining a perpetual possibility. Only a second. Towards the door we never opened. Into the rose garden. <laughs> what in the f- You know, okay. Imagine you're on LSD and mush- or mushrooms, you know. Um, and this just- that came on shuffle, girl. You know, depending on if you're having a good trip or a bad trip, you're gonna be tweaking out tweaking okay because bitch what in the fuck was that what where is she trying to take me i love i already said i love the psychedelic vibe um but that was like deeper than psychedelic but she's trying to get like deep down in your soul vibes like in your mind cavities but i i i love it you know i wasn't expecting it to go that deep or for us to take this route 
Um, but I'm obsessed. You know, it's 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 very deep. My favorite part was the ending. She says, "Footfalls echo in the memory, down the passage which we did not take, towards the door we never opened, into the rose garden." So, so, oh my gosh, like what? Uh, you know, I don't even do LSD or mushrooms, but I feel like I just did. Listening to that, it, it, you know, okay, she just said into the rose garden, but the whole time I was listening to that, I felt like I was just laying in a field of flowers, just mesmerized and just reminiscing of past events and future events. God. I'm gagged. The song was about time. Uh, time is a very conch, con, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very confusing topic, you know, so you need to be in the right state of mind, but maybe you need to be in an altered state of mind to understand what time is. We never will understand what it is. So it's just, I just love songs like this. I love when artists get real deep and shit like that that was real fucking cute and i wasn't expecting that and that was a fucking interlude bitch what the middle of this album is taking me what i'm gagged what uh, what but the next song is called religion girl okay oh my god She's so freaky. Just over the beat. That interlude, that just very deep, magical, thought provoking interlude coming into this i thought you know it was gonna be you know more religion shit because she already had a song god knows i tried so i thought it was gonna be a continuation of that girl she took it to like a prayer by madonna okay i always say this with madonna and i think i brought up madonna in the ultra violence video because that kind of gave me madonna as well madonna inspired the girls okay you know, and it's very prevalent throughout the 2010s era. She literally has a song called Like a Prayer, where she's, the song is saying, when I'm down on my knees, it, it's like a double entendre. She's praying, but she's actually just, you know, sucking dick. Um, that's what this literally is. Um, I'm gagged. I love that so much. It was a twist that I wasn't expecting. I thought we were gonna keep going deep, but I'm glad it took that turn, you know, because once again, I'm not really a religious person and I, you know, don't really listen to religious music, but that was a sickening take, twist on, you know, just that idea itself. So I love that. It's not my favorite, but you know, it's not terrible and it's not taking away anything from this album matter of fact this album's consistency wise is gagging me which we'll save for the end of the video this man is she's more than in love with this man she is she, she prays to him whether that be on her knees hooking dick or just you know just giving her giving him her love which God, okay but let's keep going the next song is called salvatore <laughs> Okay, here we go, bitch. Oh my god. Gag. Oh, gag. The fucking drums in the back. Oh. Oh my god. She it sounds so beautiful. God. Oh my god. 
Okay, I keep having to change my mind on what is my favorite song, but this is a contender, okay? Just the soft fucking vocals over that. There was the beat dropped a little bit, but it wasn't too much in your face. It was perfect. It was fucking perfect. And the fact that she was like, is that French? You know, Salvatore? What is that? I thought it was just called Salvatore. Girl, you know, really put me in the mood. These probably were my favorite vocals from this album so far. I'm gagging. Um, You know, and from the beginning of this song, she set it up because she said, all the lights in Miami begin to gleam. Ruby, blue, and green, neon too. Everything looks better from above, my king, like aquamarine oceans blue. So what I'm getting is, because she already was talking about downtown in this song, was you're in a high rise in downtown art deco vibes again. But this time it's like neon green and like blues and, and shit like that. So it's just, oh my God. This album really knows, it, it's like, very the continuity of the album is solid as fuck okay fuck so it just feels like you're looking down on a city that's just it, it's nighttime the lights are gleaming it's it's beautiful okay i love where this album is taking me mentally um it's good it's it's way it's a okay i'm going to say it it's better than ultraviolence i'm just going to say it because ultraviolence was very sad a very great album but it was sad it made me feel sad this one just makes me feel like i'm in like dream pop psychedelic vibes you know like a dark barbie are we gagging <laughs> i'm gagging i'm i'm gagging but let's keep going the next song is called the blackest day Bitch. Oh my god, it's She loves guns. Okay, first of all, I want to say that song was six minutes long, and I always say that a long song on an album is either a gag or it's a chop, and that was a gag, okay? And I've been wanting to say this since um, Ultra Vi since I did Ultra Violence last week. She gives me um, Amy Winehouse in a way. Because Amy Winehouse was just so good at writing and, like, just the way she expressed herself and you could feel the emotions. But it's like, it's like a mirror. How do I say it? Like, there are two different versions of each other, okay? If that makes sense. Like, one is very soulful, jazzy, raspy. That's Amy. And Lana is more like light but dark and sweet at the same time it's it's a gag that song really took me back to ultra violence because it was just you know so fucking sad um but i love that's what i loved about ultra violence she took that sadness and made it into something beautiful with that album and I feel like this could have belonged on that album, if I'm being honest. You know, going deeper and deeper, and it's getting darker and darker in your depression. It's a sad vibe. But, you know, um, when you can create things like this out of that vibe, it's it makes it, once again, beautiful. 
and listenable. Once again, because it's relatable to the listener or, you know, just your audience that you want. The Ultraviolence Girlies, I know y'all love this song. <laughs> because, it, first of all, it is a gag. I'm not going to lie. The vocals were beautiful. The build-ups were beautiful. The bridge was beautiful. Everything was beautiful about that song. So I really have nothing bad to say about it. And it makes you want to listen to it and light up a cigarette and just, you know, get down and dirty with your thoughts and your heartbreak and your depression. Um, but, you know, songs like this do help you get out of your depression because of the relatability of it. It's a gag. It's a gag. But let's keep going. The next song is called 24. See, this right here gives me Amy. Oh my god. Baby. Baby. Okay. Bitch. Oh my god. Okay, just off at just first glance of the title of the song, I thought she was going to go back to her mid-twenties and, you know, reminisce on the good but sad times of your early twenties. But no, this was more in-depth. And what in the fuck, Lana? Mm, mm, mm. You know, she's one of the best writers of this generation. Now that I'm actually getting into her music and actually going forward and taking it serious, she's one of the best writers. It's just prevalent throughout this whole fucking, the last two videos that I've done. It's, uh, uh, uh. and you know what's crazy? I literally just said with The Blackest Day that it's giving me Amy Winehouse. That was Amy fucking Winehouse right there, okay? through and through okay i don't care what nobody says the whole vibe just gave me amy fucking winehouse the hums and just going over that almost spooky beat it was really just it just really set the tone and i was just uh, in awe for that song that was good fucking song that was a good song she says there's only 24 hours in a day and half of those you lay between the sheets with me, my lying love. Double entendre, they're laying down, obviously, but lying. Bitch, stop lying to my girl. Like, she does not deserve this. Sh like, her heart is too pure and too golden for this. Like, mm, mm, mm. But at the same time... This is where she gets her good music from. Like the emotions are so heavy and just so heartful and soulful. You feel them deeply. And I love that so much. Even when she's just singing about her lion ass nigga. Okay? We feel it, girl. It's relatable. We're, we've all been there, unfortunately. Um, but let's keep going. The next song is called Swan Song. Those vocals. Mm. 
Okay, you know, that kind of felt like an outro to an album, and I, you know, I, I would have been applauding the girls, okay? But there is one more song. But this song right here, she's obsessed with dancing, okay? That's what it was giving me, and you know, um, there not there like a play or something? The, the swan or the black? swan something like that um that's what it was giving me like a ballerina vibe but she literally said put your tennis shoes on and come follow me and to me that's just it's just giving follow my footsteps while we dance um because she's been talking about it through this whole album just dance with me while we kiss to the soft rock music it's it's beautiful okay that's what i will say and that's why it gave me like the out an outro for an album gotta go but also i don't i'm not really sure what a swan song is but to me like context clues it's giving you and me are in a relationship right and that's like it's like our song we dance to this we smoke to this we make love to this song and you know that it's going once again with the, her emotions you just you feel like you're in love with this person or you want to dance with this person it's sickening it's fucking sickening okay i'm god but let's keep going the last song on this album is called don't let me be misunderstood ooh Okay, Miss Lana Del Rey. Bitch, give it up. Give it the fuck up. Yes! Uh, bitch, that was, that was beautiful, okay? An ending to this amazing project. I have nothing bad to say about that outro. I think that was a perfect outro. You know, I thought that the song before it would have been a gag of an outro, but this right here just sent us off with a beautiful kiss it sounded different from anything on the album by the way i love that gesture royalty 1500s vibe that i was getting um love that a lot but also it was giving me like janice joplin vibes kind of or like you know just like a a a, a girl folk singer from back in the day i don't know if that's a thing i don't know um, but that's what it was giving me, um, a really beautiful ending to this album. And you know, it speaks volumes because she said it throughout this whole album, especially on Lord Knows I Tried and, you know, just here and there throughout the album, she doesn't want to be misunderstood, you know, she says these things, she does these things, but she's, she has good intentions behind them and I feel that, I feel it behind the just everything i already said she has a golden heart okay these lyrics don't come from just anywhere okay it's it's 
it's it makes sense and that's why this was the last song and i am gagged okay i do want to say that like these last few songs just reminded me of like if there was a dark disney princess okay like an alternative disney princess would be a gag okay and she would fit perfectly in there okay yeah, um, but let's get into my overall review, my rating, and my top five of this album. Now, my overall review for this album, I have a few things I would like to say, okay? Now, I've seen it in the past, like on Twitter and stuff, people say Lana's music is just it's all the same it all sounds the same i used to think this back in the day before i even started listening to lana but that's just because they never listened okay each album so far hits a different core in a different way yes it is sad vibes but it all sounds different if that makes sense like it just and it feels different too you know like you can tell she was in different places in her life this to me was like a happier sad to me in my opinion it gave me more of there's a light at the end of the tunnel vibe um and i do want to say right now that this to me is lana del rey's best album i'm i'm just gonna keep it a buck i have nothing bad to say about this album it was beautiful from start to absolute finish, the lyrics were beautiful, the production was beautiful, but we're gonna get into that in my rating or whatever. But it was just, it was sickening, okay? And the fact that she dropped this back to back from Ultra Violence is crazy. You know, there's that um, picture of the black house and the pink and purple house sitting right next to each other in California. That, this, like, I can't, it's it, like that's the only way I can express the jump from ultra violence to this such a big jump um and this is more of my forte you know some people think ultra violence is her best some people think born to die is her best I thought Norman Rockwell was her best and you know what I'm not even gonna lie it could be a tie because Norman Rockwell is just so good and timeless but this to me is just it's like, it's like Norman Rockwell's older, more edgier sister, in a way, and I, I'm like gagged about it. And just the name of the album itself, Honeymoon, it fits so well with just the atmosphere and the vibe you get from this album. So there's that, and it's just, oh my god, bitch. She really put her foot, her pussy in this motherfucking album, okay? The girls just weren't doing it. 2015. Okay, wait. 2015 was the year Adele dropped 25. Oh, them bitches. <laughs> them bitches were having a pissy off. Okay, like, let's be real. These bitches were crazy. I'm gagged. <laughs> I'm really gagged. Okay, so I get my ratings from these five categories from an album. Vocals, production, consistency, writing, and the album cover itself. So let's start off with the vocals. You all already know how I feel about Lana Del Rey's vocals. They take me to a place where it feels like magical but dark at the same time. Once again, Dark Disney Princess is the vibe that she gives me when she sings. Um, a girl crying diamonds from her eyes, that's what it gives me. It's just the atmosphere that she takes you with her vocals alone. Um, and on this album, 10 easy 10 beautiful through and through from start to finish like i said but the next category is production this production was a step up from ultra violence in my in my sweet little opinion um what really carried ultra violence's production was just a handful of songs but this right here and i'm pretty sure i gave ultra violence production a 10 but if i could go back that i would give that a 9.5 Okay, it was great, but this is excellent. Okay, this is per gag re okay? But I'm going to give it a 10 because everything, you know, and it was so unexpected to the um, psychedelic vibes that you were getting, the soft pianos, the little drum, 
not little, but soft drums that you would hear in the back that you wouldn't even know that were coming. It was the build-ups, the beat drops, the vocals. This goes back to the vocals, but the vocals that were layered, that goes into the production category for me. And yeah, like I said, a 10. It's Okay, the next category is consistency. See, this is where ultraviolence took a nasty spill. Um, the consistency here, though, was gagari. This album was perfectly laid out, in my opinion. I, you know, in that interlude, really sold it for me. Not gonna lie, it felt like it separated the album in a really good way. Um, it, it was just, it was like a movie it was like a climax the middle of the album was like a climax and the end of the album really just brought you in and just tied up the whole experience itself so i'm gonna give this consistency a 10 i i don't know if i already said that but i'm gonna give this consistency a 10 gagging okay the next category is writing this is why i take time out between each song to talk about it because i don't want to go back at the end of the video and just read off a bunch of lyrics like girl get real but i did do that during the the album experience itself there was tons of standout lyrics some that i didn't even name or i forgot to name out her writing is very excellent i even said she's one of the best writers from this generation of artists and it it's it shines it very like very much so like if it's not her vocals or her production or the way she lays out an album it's always going to be her writing and the way that she expresses herself i'm gonna give the writing a 10 she is such a gaggery okay a, a generational talent um, okay, and the last category is the album cover. Once again, going along with the word honeymoon, it fits perfectly, the album cover fits perfectly with the atmosphere, the sound, the feeling of the album. I already said it was giving me like dreamy, but dark dreamy. It, the album cover itself isn't really dark, which I love. I love that it's like bright and in your face. It's beautiful but the sky in the background just gives me dreamy and like I feel like I'm just floating while I'm listening to this album it's a really good album to listen to while you're smoking and I think the album cover just fits that perfectly Starline tours she's taking tours through California that's that's what it is that's what the fuck it is I felt like I was driving around California Listen, if I'm ever in California, this is going to be one of the albums that I'm listening to while I'm just experiencing what it is to be in California. I know people that actually live in California are like, girl, please get real. But like, <laughs> I'm so serious. Um, and that's what this album cover is just giving me. It's giving me that hopeful dream vibe. I love it so much. I'm going to give it a 10 because it fits the album sound and atmosphere itself. So if you take the score for each so if you take the score for each category that I named here you get a total score of 10. This is a perfect album to me through and th I keep saying it but through and through it's a perfect album to listen to so many situations okay whether it's a heartbreak or you just want to feel better um, or you just are having a good time with your girls you're drinking you're smoking it's a perfect fucking album to listen to this is this is a gem in my opinion and i cannot believe that i haven't heard more about this album if i'm being real it's gagging me so my top five from lana del rey's honeymoon album is music to watch boys to 24 salvatore art deco and freak these are the five songs that stood out to me i would love to know the five songs that stood out to you or if you want to rank all the songs themselves, do it. Please do. I'm very interested in your guys' thoughts on this album. Simply because, once again, I haven't heard many people talk about this album. And I just want to know more. Like, what are your guys' thoughts? Like, were you here when this dropped? What was the vibe? You know? Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a long video because, bitch, she gagged. And, you know, I 
have to put it out there. She fucking yanked. Um, but yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts. Um, be here next week because we are going to Lust for Life, which was 2017. Two years after this album. I cannot wait for that album. And yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts. If you have anything to add. Any Lana Del Rey, uh, De Lana Del Rey lore that you would like to tell me. Please do. Um, but I guess that's it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Come back next week. And bye, motherfuckers. Thank you.